Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Giluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer, dear listener, my name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe, your host of this great show, a Mohobe Nugget of Wisdom uh, podcast. We always want to bring you powerful and impactful content having to do with entrepreneurship, uh, having to do with personal development and so on. And do I have a great guest for you? It's not his first time to visit our studios. Uh, Mr. Nelson Letsueni is a financial planner, but I leave it to him to say a little bit more about what he does. Go ahead, Mr. Letsueni. Welcome to the studio. Well, thank you very much. It's yes. good to be here again. Yes. Yes. Um, um, yeah, I'm a financial planner, give financial advice, write financial planning, write some books. And uh, so the bulk of my business is writing and talking, basically, you know, talking about money and writing about money mm. and uh, personal development issues as well. How long have you been in the personal finance industry? Well, I was trained from university into, into I did a, a Bachelor of Commerce mm -hmm. uh, at university and then uh, formally entering the space of uh, business development in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. But then specifically financial plan, and financial advisory in 2004, mm -hmm. where I started developing material for training purposes. So, so basically from the advisory side, mm -hmm. I'll say from 2004 uh, okay. to now, that gives you about 16 years or so. Okay. Yeah. And now currently you are doing trainings. Uh, can you tell the viewer what kind of trainings you do? Well, we do work, workplace financial education, mm -hmm. um, which is basically the education of the employee in terms of uh, various areas of financial planning, which may be tax planning, retirement planning, investment planning, and uh, estate planning. Mm -hmm. Those areas that are not your normal you know, financial literacy, budgets and all that. Yes. It goes way beyond, it's deeper than, than just budgeting and taking care of your monthly responsibilities. So it's about your long-term planning and all issues related to that. And today we're going to talk about a thing called black tax. Yes. Um, black uh, tax has a definition. Yes. Give us its history and its definition. Well, the word, the word black tax was basically coined in South Africa. And even though the application is wider than South Africa, it was, uh, it was coined in South Africa as a, as a means of comparing. Uh, it started sort of at a professional level, the comparison of a, of a black professional and a white professional. And basically when you take them, uh, two, two people, a black child and a, and a white child, and you take them to university, and they graduate and you even give them, a, let's say for example, you train them as engineers and you give them a job and they receive the same salary. They say uh, upon receipt of that salary, the white man goes forward and the black man goes backwards. And the reason the black man has to go backwards is because they cannot ignore the legacy of poverty from whence they have come. Mm. And the white man has none such issues and so immediately they they go forward into investments and retirement planning and they build wealth much faster than a black person would. Mm. And a black person has to obviously, you know, you know uh, their money, instead of going towards wealth building, goes towards reparations and dealing with the things from the past that they really cannot uh, uh, ignore. Yeah, they cannot ignore. So that's how it works in the context of South Africa. But outside of South Africa where, for example, in Botswana where we, we are not always defined by black or white, mm. you could also call it a class tax. And class tax would be there are so those classes that their children would just never have to go backwards. They will immediately step forward. If with the right education, financial literacy, they can start building wealth. But there are those classes 
that upon graduation, upon getting a job, cannot mm. ignore the legacy of poverty from whence they have come. So you could call it class tax and black tax, but obviously South Africa is called a black tax, and, and I see that even in the US, where, you, where there's definitions of color, mm -hmm. they have taken it as black tax, and they try to define or explain the difference between white America and black America in terms of those particular uh, definitions of black tax, yes. Um, does that mean that uh, a white professional doesn't have any obligations toward, for instance, the extended, extended family system, whereas an African might, might have that? It's, it's, it goes beyond the extended family issues, you know, um, and, and uh, basically economically, I mean, the whole idea, and I think about it, they call it black tax, mm. but it's not really a tax because it is not levied by a government mm. on, on the citizenry. It's, it's, a, it's a response, sort of, sort of a social responsibility. So you could say, yes, white people still have some social responsibilities, but it's not as obligatory mm. to the extended family mm. and to your own family as a black person would have to basically look at it. Mm. So the way that a black person would look at it would be uh, uh, almost like a tax, like I can't avoid this. Mm -hmm. Whereas a white professional might choose to participate in helping others or social responsibility programs, so to speak. There might be someone who doesn't know exactly what we're talking about. Can you define the exact type of expenditure that is falls into that category of black tax? Look, black tax is an idea. Take, take back those two professionals, even though it goes beyond the professional level. It is, it, it, it's, a, it's incumbent upon anyone who has some responsibility. For example, that, that, that black professional who I said cannot ignore the legacy of poverty from whence they come, they will have to consider what condition does, do my parents live in? What conditions do my immediate family in terms of my siblings live in? What conditions do my extended family that I have responsibility towards live in, in those conditions? So it starts sort of with poverty, addressing poverty, addressing, you know, I have maybe, I mean, lots of black people will tell you they are the first ones in their family to get a university degree when we're talking about a professional, mm -hmm. even though black tax is not, uh, uh, you, know, deep, you know, related or not, just, you know, sort of, I don't know what the word is, uh, restricted to professionals because everyone who does carry that burden mm. sees it as a burden they cannot, you know, extricate. Yeah. They cannot, they cannot extricate let themselves yeah, from. Yeah, exactly. They cannot extricate themselves from that. Mm. So it's sort of a, a, the ox that has to carry okay. this burden. The question that follows from that is when do you first realize, when do you first discover that this is black tax in operation? Okay, I mean, for you know, if we stick with the with the uh, the idea of a of a black professional, mm. is now I have a salary for the first time, mm. but I cannot just run forward with it mm. and go and invest, you know, and, and so it hits harder, you know. Before you got that salary, maybe it was just normal life. So the struggle was sort of your life, you know. You know, as Mandela said, the struggle is my life. Mm. So the struggle may have just been your life, mm -hmm. but now all of a sudden you have some money. And people start to look at you to say, look, now you have some money. So the expectations grow. Mm. And with a list of expectations that grow, you start to realize that, you know, maybe I have a little more responsibility than I thought I have mm. because now, you know, I, I have to change the situation around me. So you start realizing it with your first income or even if you, you're not a black professional, so to speak, and you didn't get a degree. But as soon as you start working mm. and you have an income, expectations of please help me show up mm -hmm. in your circle maybe yeah. immediate family or extended family but that idea goes on even you know uh, uh, beyond mm -hmm. what you you had thought you'd be able to do you start seeing the needs mm -hmm. glaring at you mm -hmm. a whole lot more i get the idea that you deal with this thing uh, a lot deeper in your book can you talk about your book in which you address this concept Okay, I, in my book, uh, uh, My Money, My Power, mm -hmm. it's, it's chapter 15 of, of the book, mm -hmm. uh, My Money, My Power. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I wrote about it in there. Just, in this book, right? Yeah, in, in that book over there, uh, My Money, My Power. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just try to give strategies to help people 
when it comes upon you, what are some of the things you need to do and how do you basically work yourself okay. out of? And I we, suppose and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Yes. But still, the aspects of black tax, you mentioned yes. that there's poverty, there's education and there's opportunities. Mm. Um, these three aspects, uh, when did it first come to the African consciousness that they are obliged? Mm -hmm. When did it creep into our culture that we are obliged to attend to these expenses? Something that doesn't happen in a white or non-African non culture. Okay, when you think about poverty, mm. it's, uh, you know, and you came from it, mm. you, you know what it is, you have experienced it. And within yourself, you would like not to have people live the way that you have lived. Mm. You have struggled and you have arrived where you have arrived. And maybe you are what you are because of those struggles. Mm. You know? But you also recognize that it just takes so much more longer, so much more of a struggle. And think about education. Education is one of the, the stepping stones that you probably had to climb to say, I'm the first person in my family. To, to have an education and therefore to have a degree, yeah. Yeah, to have a degree and uh, you know a diploma or a skill that I acquired from a tertiary institution through which I can make an income, make a, make, make an, a living mm. that, uh, with which I can help people. So education becomes a stepping stone. And, and, and so the first issue is, what do I do to the rest of my family? Can I help towards the education of my siblings mm -hmm. so that they can also have a stepping stone to be able uh, to move forward? And when you think about lack of education takes away opportunities that you would otherwise have had mm -hmm. if you had an education. Mm -hmm. And so and opportunities come to you or don't come to you. And, and that becomes one of the, the issues and the struggles that, that black techs bring. So those are some of the aspects of black techs that we have to face is how does it affect me, how does it affect people around me, their education, the opportunities around me, and, and basically the, the, the abject poverty or issues that I need to deal with just mm. to get people to live a, dis, a decent life. And um, on the issue of opportunities, does the black tax encompass a situation where, where you have an opportunity, for instance, to start a business, you want to share those opportunities with your siblings, with your family? Yes. Is that part of it? Look, yeah, look, when you, when you get opportunity you, and you come from that kind of background, and, and when you think about the African culture in itself, mm. it is a culture of, let's say, of working together, of inclusivity, try, inclusivity of, of trying to get people you know, to, to, to get forward somewhere. Mm. And uh, some cultures, maybe not so, mm. you know, but the African culture is, is that of helping each other. Mm. So, so opportunities, when they come your way, it's a very tricky thing because an opportunity may be like, this is the thing that would help me and if I get help, I can help others. Mm -hmm. And when you start sharing them, a lot of Africans have experienced where they bring their family into their businesses and then their families destroy the business, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a case 22. I want to help my family, but if I start employing my family into my business, they drain you. They start draining you because it's... It's, it's and they like, don't they don't often appreciate sometimes exactly so 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 it's a very it's it's a very tricky situation because that mm. case 22 of at what point do i do they deserve do they deserve to be here do they earn the right to be here or do they say who finally my brother's got something and i can also live a better life because of my brother mm. so it's one of those issues that we are always going to have to deal with in one form or another mm. you know uh, so the aspects of black tax are deeper than of responsibilities mm -hmm. they, they go beyond responsibilities they go towards training educating helping other people to say you know uh, I, I love gardening and I like I like trees I planted an apple tree 10 years ago in my backyard mm -hmm. and only for, for the first time this year mm -hmm. is it bearing fruit 15 years 10 years 10 years, know, sorry, yeah, 10, yeah. years. 10 years ago mm -hmm. I planted this apple tree and you have to keep watering it. And, and, and life is sort of like that. It's mm -hmm. like planting apple trees. Mm -hmm. But when winter comes and, uh, and there's no wood in the fire, there's a temptation to chop the tree mm. and put it in the fire. Mm. <laughs> I Just, know what you mean, yeah, figuratively speaking. Figuratively speaking, because yeah. the need of the hour sometimes destroys the opportunity of the future. Mm -hmm. And when you are able to get your family around the idea, say, look, let's just suffer for the next 10 years in protecting this tree mm. that could help us all. It it's now goes to the psychology, the psychology of money. How do I convince these people that 
you shouldn't pull me down now. Mm -hmm. Why not I'm even just delayed to. gratification? Yes, it's delayed survival. I don't know how to put it. <laughs> exactly. It's 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 it's. Look, I have the income, but it is not yet ready for distribution. Yeah. So it you is, have to be it, sacrificially minded. Exactly. So yeah. to be, the way to be able to deal with it is is yes, I have the education. Yes, I have the income. But shall we not distribute it now? Mm. Shall we use it as seed money to mm. plant more opportunities? that more of us can mm -hmm. have more apple trees mm -hmm. in the future. And so it becomes really a tricky thing. A lot of people, a lot of professionals, a lot of employed people fall into the trap mm -hmm. of the tree is here, let's just, yeah. let's just eat the fruit now and we forget yeah. to keep the seeds. I think if I'm paraphrasing a guy called Gary V, or Gary v, Jane Vaynerpatch, I, I can't say his name well. Yes. He, he says you have to be prepared to eat debt and you have to really eat, he uses a stronger language, you have to eat crap exactly. to survive. But you see, that's the whole thing is, if I've been eating crap all my life, how long do I want to keep eating crap? Mm. And that is where the problem comes in, is mm. to say, you know, uh, I have to be able to look at the level, the levels of, of, of uh, uh, you know, of poverty or the levels of lack within our system that is now like incumbent upon me to deal with mm. and come up with a strategy that won't drown me and that becomes the so the how does how does black tax affect our our career our business careers our work careers and so on yes you see when you think about a career is 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 you don't just get promoted mm. unless you do something so i may have a junior degree but unless i get a postgraduate you know degree the next level of management might require me to have a master's. Mm. So now I have to make a decision. Do I take money aside to go get a master's degree or do I sacrifice this so that this money can go help my siblings mm. to at least arrive where I am? Mm. So, so black tax goes deeper in the sense that it might actually hold even me back. Mm. The very one who's supposed to be helping other people out mm. I might be held back by the idea that I have to you know, help others. So career development can go on pause. Mm. We have seen many professionals, you know, who, who would like to develop their own career, to develop their own education further, but they can't because the responsibility factor is so high that they just don't have the extra money for self-development. Mm. And so you can, you can arrive where you are stalling if you are in a situation like that. Mm. And so it times for choices. In, in terms of what can you do and what can't you do. There are mm. certain things that you can do and there are certain things that you really cannot do mm. that, that allows you to, to say, here's a, here's a thing, I need to deal with it, how do I deal with it? Mm. Okay, so taking it further, this conversation, mm. uh, what are the parameters within which you, you must address black tax? I suppose we're heading to the idea of emancipating ourselves yes. from black tax. Look, when you when you get a job at the at the I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the professional, like I said, even though it doesn't always apply to that person. Mm. It applies to everybody who have responsibility. But if you start work at the age of twenty five mm. and you intend to retire at age sixty five, you only have forty years. Normally it's sixty, isn't it? Yeah, you know, but I'm stretching it because you are under a heavy uh, burden yes. of responsibility. So I'm going to give you five more years. Yes. Because most people waste the first... If you don't have a plan, mm. you might carry black tax responsibilities or class tax responsibilities for the rest of your working career, which gives you no opportunities to be able to break out of. But with a plan and awareness that you only have 35 years to 40 years, mm. then you are able to start breaking that down and say, look, I came from zero, I got the next one, you know, 35 years to work through this black tax issue. Mm. And so you would choose what it is that you need to work with mm. and say the next five years or 10 years, uh, yes, I'm gonna devote to dealing with this thing mm. uh, called uh, either poverty or uh, helping my, my siblings. Mm. But life doesn't stop. Mm. You yourself get married, you yourself get children, those children look up to you, mm. you can't ignore them, you need to start building. You yourself will retire at some point, you need to start building your retirement plan mm. or the ways that things that will produce an income for you when you are no longer able 
or to not work. willing mm. to, uh, to do the work. So the parameters, first of all, is time. Recognize that you've got limited time in which to deal with it mm. and recognize that you have limited resources which you can use to deal with it. So you're going to have to bite just enough to chew. You can't bite more than you can chew. And you must also understand because a lot of our black tax issues are you know, generational. You can't resolve it in one generation. You won't be able to just deal with it right away and it disappears. You must be able to figure out and set parameters and say, this is how far that I will be able to deal with it. Because if you think about countries like you know, uh, the US or South Africa or where we are really dealing with the blackness of this tax, mm -hmm. is the inequalities have been going on for you know, 300, 400 years. Mm -hmm. And you don't have that kind of time. You've got only 40 years <laughs> yeah. to deal with it. With maximum. The, maximum within your own family. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to resolve all of it. Especially if you're employed by an organization or government. Exactly, where they will tell you at the age of 60 that you got to go. Mm -hmm. You must understand that by that time when they tell you to go, you must have done something to at least that your own children don't have to deal with black tax. But let's apply to an entrepreneur. The mm. presumption is as an entrepreneur, you have freer hours, you're probably not guaranteed much of a pension. Yes. How do entrepreneurs and, and business people approach the black tax? Because I suppose the same culture and, mm. and set of obligations still falls on their shoulders. Okay. You have to face the facts. Mm. Investing leads to building wealth. Mm. If you don't start to invest, you don't have a chance of building wealth. Investing also means removing some money from the cycle of dealing with daily issues and putting it aside and giving it a chance of growing. If you don't, if you don't even, if you don't begin to invest, and you are like, what? You know, most people who are stuck in the cycle are like, when you say invest, they say invest what? Everything goes to what's taking care of today's needs. Mm. Is you're gonna have to say. This is just so much of today's needs I can take care of. And understand that if you don't set some money aside for investing, you don't stand a chance of building wealth. And if you don't build wealth, you don't stand a chance of extricating yourself from this. So uh, what about this. just declaring your independence and stubbornly refusing to participate in any of this? Um, you know, would you advise somebody to consider that? Let's say, why, why? I'm, I'm just resisting this culture. I'm walking away from it. Is it something you'd consider as a financial planner look, think, to advise? Look, think about it. Think mm. about every philanthropist in the world mm. that they've had to build the wealth first. Mm. So there's a, there's a time where you're going to have to say, for the next 10 years, I am not participating in the, uh, the, the, system. the, the, the system of you know, buy us groceries, buy us electricity, buy us this, buy us this. I'm gonna hold back so that I can build. So mm. if it's with a plan to building something better, then you can extricate yourself so that you can be able to help. Mm. And, and not a refusal in terms of, I don't wanna participate, I'm happy, I got my, my income, I got my children, I'm just going forward. Mm. You can't, you know, you could do that, but the, the better way is with a strategy. Yeah, but they won't know what your long-term strategy is. I mean, what's the difference? And if maybe they shouldn't know. Because mm -hmm. if they did, they might just be the very ones that sabotage it. Mm -hmm. To say, how do you say you want to build wealth when we are still in poverty? So, so some of this, you're going to play your cards close to your chest. But you must have a strategy. Okay, I, I really want you to develop this concept more. Because I think we should be thinking in terms of... Uh, emancipation. So I really want to know the strategy. Um, I know how it affects your financial plan, yes. but the strategy towards towards dealing with it. Okay. That's, yeah. Yeah. Look. Look. I think. I think one of the things you have to face is that investing leads to wealth. To wealth building. Mm. And if you don't invest at any point, mm. you are never going to have an opportunity to build wealth. Mm. And and investing does mean uh, removing some of your today's earnings from the current situation of dealing with you know uh, daily issues mm. okay mm. so 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 the way to extricate yourself is to be able to understand that i need to build wealth and i can't build wealth unless i invest now you may invest money you may invest time you have to choose uh, uh, what you are investing in so that the, the whole idea is i need to create a thing 
mm. in addition to me that will produce an income. It may be a business, it may be separate investments, it, whatever it is, unless you deliberately make a decision to say, the only way out of this is to invest, and I'm going to refuse to participate, as you mentioned earlier on, about refusing to participate in the daily issues. Mm. It's not that you are being heartless, mm. but you are, you are having that strategy that says, uh, uh, this thing shouldn't continue. I don't want. I don't want my children to go through what I went through. Therefore, I am going to set up, set aside some money and time to create things that will help us. Now, in terms of your own observation and some of the clients you've had, has anyone successfully extricated themselves? And what were by applying these principles? Very good point. I had a I had a client who who came from. A, a beautiful village called Kanye. Mm. <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> and she said when she grew up and, and she became my client after she implemented some of these things mm. and, and, and so it wasn't credit to me that she implemented. Mm. She made a decision to say after observing what she was what was going on with her own family, mm. she decided for the first five years of her life, she will of, of her working life, five years. So she had she had a plan broken down by five years, mm. all the way to 35 years. Mm. For the first five years, she says, this five years is towards helping my mother to come out of poverty. Here's what I will do. She has this big yard in, 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 uh, in, in her village in Kanye. Mm. I am her going home to, village. Yeah, in her home village. And she said, I will deliberately spend the, the first five years creating a system, which may mean build her a house and build an additional house that she can rent out, that, uh, from which she'll be able to get an income. So she spent the first five years, she took her loan, that five year loan, did that. After that five years, she made, she said, now it's me. And it's not that I'm gonna be able to get out so quickly, but I'm going to start investing for me. Mm -hmm. And so she said the next five years is years of buying a, a, a plot for me. So I'm gonna take a loan, buy a plot for me, and maybe buy another plot for investment. And so it was the next five years deliberately focusing on buying the plot, and so the burden was slightly off from her mother because she had a rental unit that her mother could use to be able to take care of the daily issues. And she communicated this to, uh, to the mother and other relatives? Communication is, is relative mm. because, you see, communication, you, you may communicate your long-term plan, but when people have daily bread issues today, they don't really they care. They don't care, and they don't understand. Yeah, they don't understand. So, so the plan needs to be yours to implement. Mm -hmm. And so where you say, I can't help, I can't help, okay? Mm -hmm. But it was clear that for her, the burden of daily groceries for her mother were off because there was a unit in her mother's yard that she said to mom, I will help where I can, but for the daily issues, groceries, that rental should be able to help you. So the next five years, she bought some plots for herself, and then the, 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 the third five years, mm. she was building her own home now. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. And so she built her own home, and the, when I met her, she was doing her fourth five-year plan, mm. which was now investing and buying more plots, even outside. She started buying in the north, and she started... Thinking. So I think if somebody has a plan like that, if there's a young person listening to this, you need to start and understanding that the way to extricate yourself from this is through a proper financial plan, mm. not an ad hoc, I will help where I help type thing. Mm. Because sometimes when you help, people cling on to you and they want you to help for life, mm. you know, forever. And, and so you never get off. Yeah. So, so, so you have to be deliberate in your financial plan to say five years or however long time it will take you. And if you are willing to share, I'm sure you you assisted her to now 10x whatever plan she has and what strategies do you then put in place to not only stick to the five-year plan but to improve it somewhat significantly or exponentially she even grew to the point where she said look it's not just about me having a plot here and another plot for me to make rentals out of mm. she was able to look into other investment classes mm. that she could start putting money into even within the real estate which was her choice, mm. she was able to see it's not just residential properties, mm. but I could also invest in, you know, so she started buying outside. Even with your, with your help? Yes, you, mm. know, you, know, you know, some of those who was, was look, now I'm, now I'm going into 
buying plots for lodge or mm. for business mm. or for all that because then the trees the trees are becoming bigger mm. and bigger mm. and she's able to be able to yeah, do something. I know you have a whole yes uh, a whole teaching on the money tree, on the money trees which, yes. which yes. I think you've touched on before yes in the yes. previous episode um, I would really love for us to 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 see if whether we can actually re re eradicate uh, black tax. So the question is, can we eradicate it in a lifetime, in our lifetimes? Look, uh, in your lifetime you can contribute to the extent that you can mm -hmm. and the best strategy in my opinion is to relieve the next generation mm -hmm. from having to do it. You had had to go back, okay? You had to go back to take care of things. Mm -hmm. For maybe, and you might do that for the rest of your life. Mm. But let your children not have to look back to you, mm -hmm. to help you, mm -hmm. you understand? If you've, if you've gotten out of that situation, you've gotten an education, you've no, gotten some investment. No, don't become a dependent. Exactly, make sure that you're, at least we can, you can free one generation to, to be able to go away. Now, it may just be your next generation. If they repeat what you have learned, mm. they can do it to the next generation and to the next generation. Mm. But. If you are always going to be the one carrying the responsibility all the time mm. and never even passing it on to your children to, to be able to never, to basically not have to look back, mm. then everybody is always helping someone else and everybody mm. gets stuck in the process. And that is, that is hardly anyway. So mm. the question to can we eradicate in a lifetime? If we have a plan, we can. Mm. But it's, remember, it's your lifetime. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, the society might still have evidence of poverty, evidence of issues around in the society, mm -hmm. but you need to be able to say, where I have influence, I can do something about mm -hmm. it, basically. No, I understand fully. Yeah. Um, can family societies gang tackle or group tackle black tax? You know, I think... And if so, how? And, and I think one of the things that uh, African societies have always done is the ability to work together. Mm. And I'm thinking when we come into, into, into money and finance, mm. is, is the idea that, um, you know, we, we can form uh, uh, you know, cooperatives, for example. Yeah. We can form foundations, mm -hmm. education foundations. We can help by creating apprenticeship for, 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 for children coming up. So the society, not in the traditional village way, but even in the cities, what do entrepreneurs do? You're talking do? about mentorship programs. Yes, there could be mentorship programs, you know, but with, with, uh, with real help in the sense of if we, f if we are able to identify in our sphere of influence as entrepreneurs or as employees, it might go so much more further if you and me and, and 10 others contribute to something, to a fund, mm -hmm. you know, foundations and, and, and things that can be able to help our societies mm. could go a longer way than me trying to carry the family issues alone. Now, families who have two or three people that are educated could form an education foundation, start contributing towards that. Mm. And in the future, the next generation don't have to struggle with either education and those that do have you know businesses if people get educated right to work in those businesses yeah. then they don't pull the businesses down and you you've uh, you've quoted the capitalist nigger and the spider web mentality or, yes. Or yes. approach how can it help us can you ex uh, please help the viewer understand what that is and and how it can help us there, there's a book called the capitalist nigger that talks about the, the pakistani network or how, how Eastern people, and anyone who's observant has seen how people, Asians, come into a country and they almost always stick together. Every city in the world has a place called Chinatown. Mm. Okay? You can go to every major city. Oriental Plaza. Yes, you, yeah, yeah. The Oriental Plaza, which means the people from the Orient mm. are working here. Mm. You know, and, uh, and, and, and so basically, what they do is they create a system where if money, when money comes into Chinatown, it never leaves. Mm. They themselves don't buy anything outside of the plaza or outside of that. Mm. So when money comes in, money stays and money helps them. Mm. And, so, and so that is, that is a, a, a networks that Africans could start. Mm. You know, when I lived in Soweto, you would see a lot of people who grew up in Soweto deliberately driving back to Soweto to fill up their cars. 
mm. with a deliberate effort to say, I want my, I want to buy petrol there. Mm. I, I want to do groceries there. They have moved out, but they realize the responsibility to keep supporting entrepreneurs that are still based I mean, in all the way from Senton to Suet. Yeah, you know what I mean? They would, they would almost deliberately make sure that they do most of their commercial spending mm. in those townships because the, 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 you know, the, the level of, 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 commerce, of commerce in that without them mm. would be reduced. Mm. So, so in the suburbs closer to Soweto, mm. they would deliberately go buy their groceries in Soweto, mm. deliberately go put their petrol there, deliberately go for lunch there. Mm. You know? Now obviously they can't do that every day, mm. but there's a deliberate effort to say a certain amount of my money will be plowed back into that economy. And therefore you are, you are starting to create do that. Do you think Botswana adopting that mentality? Do you think as you have been operating in the financial planning space, any of that is permeating through those ideas? Look, I think ideas are things that continue to be discussed, and as they are discussed, even on platforms like this, mm -hmm. there are seeds that get planted, mm -hmm. and people may do that. I've seen people formulate huge mozzarella groups, mm -hmm. and, and that is one way that as, as, as uh, 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 professionals are able to put huge amounts of money together. What they do with it mm -hmm. in order to raise their communities could be the next step to mm -hmm. say, we have the capability to put money together. Mm -hmm. What do we do to raise our communities? You know, we have village development uh, committees. committees, you know, everywhere. And, and uh, um, this may be a topic for another day, mm -hmm. but I'm not always a fan of just give money away. Mm -hmm. I'd rather empower, empower mm -hmm. help people to come up with projects that, I could, that, that could be able to, you know, to help them out. Mm -hmm. All the way even to churches. Sometimes when you, you know, that's why I say it's, it's a topic for another day. Yeah. You know, contributing huge amounts of money to, to a system that doesn't know how to invest is not necessarily helping that system. So if you know that you have the power to invest, perhaps investing for that particular system, it's better than just giving it cash, which might end up just taking care of expenses and not really being a way of planting a tree. And you, 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 you specifically say we must support local productions. Yes. How do we so, uh, do so without being discriminatory? Because often there's been an accusation that when we, people now since COVID have been coming out on social media, that we, you know, buy chicken from Botswana producers, buy this, boycott this, boycott that. And that there's been a perception that we've invited all this foreign direct investment and investors to come in. Now we are in the process of boycotting them. So, so how do you rationalize that? Look, uh I don't think I've seen a boycott in mm. Botswana where mm. people boycott anything. The talk is there. Yeah, it's just a talk to say let's boycott. Mm. Uh, but but I'm not too sure, you know, how it it's practical mm. to boycott. Because mm. if I want bread, mm. and the closest place to buy bread is here, I will go there. Mm. But I think without a deliberate effort to support mm. those that are trying to come up, because the big international conglomerates that are here especially in the consumer space, don't necessarily, other than employing people, in, reinvest back mm. in, in, in the communities, you understand? You know, you don't see a big grocery store saying, let me help a tax shop in a village somewhere by, you know, putting my stock there and just helping them and teaching them that. You don't always see that. Mm. You see almost a, a, um, a uh, shallow up mentality. Know, where, where they want to get bigger and bigger and bigger so mm. I am not against people saying let's support local in fact I would say yeah. let us support local but mm. I don't think supporting local will necessarily take away mm. from from supporting non-local mm. I don't think I don't think it will it even will. if we're dealing with monopolies it's look when you're dealing with monopolies and we have competition authorities mm. then we really have to ask the, the authorities to say, look, is this really fair competition? Yeah, you understand. Yeah, and, yeah. and so it goes back to to where governments can can pitch in to okay. deal with it. Now, that's the last point we want to discuss. Can government help? Yeah. Look. And and what help can government do? <clears throat> look, there are certain there are certain levels where you can literally, you know, the, the, there's a big debate in the U.S. right now. Mm. You know, where the the Republicans or the capitalist, if I were to label them that, mm. are anti-social programs. Mm. And uh, 
it's in and, and South Africa goes into that space as well where we talk about you know uh, 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 reparations of the past mm -hmm. you know and and Botswana can also enter that fray to say how do we really help people in the villages to be able to lift themselves up mm. you, you understand mm. so programs can be there so I don't think you can be completely anti-social social programs that that just gives people a stepping stone you know because because the, the capitalist system might just say opportunities are there but then we know for example in the US that even if you are qualified we're not gonna re remove your skin when we are employed, when we are uh, interviewing for the job. Mm. That shows up. The idea that you are black shows up. Mm. And so that's gonna work against you. That's so why it, they used to talk about affirmative action. Exactly. So affirmative action is, is there a way that I can make you not to look at my skin mm. by giving me two more brownie points just above? Mm. You know, South Africa tried with a BEE program and every program that gets tried obviously will will have its own problems, different mm. problems. Mm. You know, we have a lot of programs in Botswana, you know, whether it's, you know, from the FAP programs of the past mm. to now CEDA in, in Layard all its, Layard, CEDA in all its different forms. Mm. There are programs to try to say, give me a step, a step up, you know, mm. can, I, can you just give me a leg to, to, to stand on mm. so I can be able to do something. So programs like that, I, don't, I think they are always going to be required, needed, mm. along with the mentorship programs where people, because the psychology of it, you can't leave out. No, we can't, can't just we can't just put resources here mm. and not deal with the psychology, where, where oh, the psychology of self destruction, mm. and the psychology of self destruction is me thinking, you are my brother, you need to help me, mm. and and if you don't, it, this, then you are evil. <laughs> yeah, then you are evil. You understand? That's the psychology of self destruction because by pulling you down, I am pulling down the very thing that could be able to help you down. Yeah. It's like that tree that I'm cutting down. Yeah. That instead of waiting for the fruit to come. Mm. That's very interesting. So, you, do you, do you, do, what do you think of? Um, I think I had Ram here as a guest. Mm. Uh, we suggesting that certain parts of India, I think he said southern India, they actually have a deliberate scheme or, or effort where banks or financial institutions are compelled via legislation, via the uh, you know people like Bank of Botswana, who, who to 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 lend to certain sections uh, of the community as a way of bringing them up yeah. and maybe uh, gradually liberating them from black tax and other considerations through empowerment. Yeah. Mm. Look, uh, uh, it's it's a it's a battle between the private sector and the public sector. It's a battle between what is free market mm. and what is not free market. Mm. Now, when you are running a free market system, mm. it's hard to come to your business, Mister Mokobi, and say, "I'm legislating that two two customers come and eat for free." Mm. You know what I mean? You're like, "But how do I finance that? Yeah. Can you allow me rather to be the one offering?" systems that would help me and not pull me down. So legislating change almost always backfires, mm -hmm. but encouraging the consciousness of the people, including those of the, of the bankers or the systems that, that have more money than whatever. So encouragement and lifting the social consciousness mm -hmm. where we are all thinking differently about our fellow men mm. and, and, and trying to see our fellow men go up mm. instead of the capitalist system where I'm just trying to build a monopoly, mm. that's not going to help. So, yeah, yeah. so legislation, mm. I am not too sure. that yeah. It's like legislating morality. Yeah. This is a moral thing to do. Yeah. You can only encourage it. Mm. But when you legislate it, I'm going to, you know, if I'm not interested, I'm going to find sabotage. a way, loophole to yeah. sabotage yeah. such a thing. This is the part of our interview, Mr. Litwini, where you get a chance to ask me a question, to raise an issue for me to respond to. <laughs> yeah, that's putting me on the spot. Mm. I never, I didn't think about that. Okay. Mm. So, so we are talking about black tax. Yes. And and so maybe I can throw the, the question back to you. Mm. You know, we talked about planting trees or you know uh, 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 helping to help. Mm. My question would be. In what way would you see yourself participating in the upliftment mm. of other entrepreneurs or systems of help? Yeah, basically. Yeah, I was lucky because I was able to see it early. That look, um, 
I have to do something for my parents. Mm. But thankfully, our second generation degree holder or educated. So, mm. although my parents have not attained much in terms of wealth, but they were reasonably uh, well off. They will take care of themselves. Yes. So my assistance was only in the form of maybe uh, arranging a stop order. I arranged a stop order for both my parents uh, to to just augment what they already had. Yes. yes. I also assisted one of them by you know by a vehicle. I also helped them finish their house, mm. things like that. So yes. I'm very much a participant, but I've, I've always been aware. I was lucky in that I was aware early from reading and so on mm. that. I have, I'm only useful to them if I succeed. Yes. There's a, yes. uh, there's a famous saying that there's a reason why aeroplanes somewhere in the 50s, owners of aeroplanes got together and came up with this set of rules that are applicable to everybody. Mm. When you get in the aeroplane, the first thing they say, if the, the place loses oxygen, the first place to put a mask is on yourself. Yes. Don't bother helping your child. You know, to an African or somebody else, yourself, un yeah. until you've helped yourself. Don't yeah. bother. Only assist the next person when you've assisted yourself. Yes. So there needs to be that greater recognition, and I've been fortunate in that. Mm. I think it's something that I really appreciate. That I'm only useful to the next person if I'm useful and I'm successful in helping myself. Yes, and just yeah. and just the, in, in the last way, I always tell people. The Good Samaritan wasn't broke. No, he no. had to have. We're only talking yes. about the Good Samaritan right now because he had, he, he had money. Exactly. I mean, yes. he took that yes. guy who was beaten up to the inn. Yes. And he he and paid he paid paid for yeah. the lodging, taking care of it, and then he paid for the whatever food was necessary. But for that remember, person. he didn't sit there and watch him. He continued to go make money yes. on his business trip. Yes. So there are certain times when you're gonna have to just leave and say, I gotta go. Mm. I know there's need here. I will cover what I can. But if I don't go on this business trip, I, lose. I won't be able to pay back yeah, yeah. You know, the rest of the thing. So there's that level of mm. involvement to say the responsibility doesn't stop because I have extra cash. Okay. It continues. Mr. Litsuen, we've come to the end of our time together. I'm inviting you to look at the camera there and share with the viewer a takeaway message, something powerful, a nugget of wisdom that you can a message of encouragement there may be a youngster there maybe somebody struggling that they can take away with relation to the subject of black tax okay well um, like I mentioned as we in our discussion if you don't invest you don't stand a chance of building wealth and so it is very important that regardless of what is going on around you regardless of the responsibilities you carry a portion of what you earn must go towards building wealth for the future. How much of a portion, it's up to you. But some portion has to go there because that is the only tree that if you planted it, it will give you fruit in the future. Thank you very much, Mr. Litsuene. It remains for me to thank you so much for taking the time out. We really appreciate your sacrificing your, your, your very valuable time to come and have a conversation with us here on Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. It's a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Mm. There you go. Mm.